G'day, I'm the Home Distiller and uh, today I'm just going to uh, give you a quick overview of the motors that I'm going to install in my C6 lathe and uh, also the uh, machining of the pulley for said motor. Um, I actually originally turned this pulley for uh, one of the two motors that I've got and after looking at them a little bit closer um, I've decided that um, I'm going to use the other motor, so you'll, uh, the, the uh, shaft is just a, uh, a hair bigger on this other motor, so it's, um, if you see me fitting this pulley up on the, the other motor, that would be why. Um, so let's uh, zoom in on the motors and have a look. Okay, so this is the motor that I'm going to be using. Um, it's came from a treadmill. Um, there's n no information on this motor as to its um, RPM, its um, voltage, nothing. Nothing on it at all. Um, but looking at the uh, the wiring in it um, compared to the one, the other motor that I have in the background here, which actually does have um, it does have its specs um, on it. It's actually, uh, if you're looking at the um, the rotor, um, it's actually a much uh, it's got a lot less wire on the rotor. The wire is a lot thinner than this particular motor so I think I'm going to stick with this one it seems like it's going to handle a lot more current as the wire is quite a bit thicker in it and the uh, rotor is chock-a-block um, the only thing is I'm guessing as to its RPM etc um, but uh, being a DC motor they as long as it's not getting too hot and the, and the uh, brushes aren't arcing or anything in it, it should be fine. Um, and just looking at the, as I said, this, the wire in this should be able to handle a lot more current than this puppy. And this is one and a half horsepower, the one in the background here, this is one and a half horsepower. So I'm going to say that this is probably a two horsepower or two and a half horsepower motor. Um, I'll probably run it, uh, this one in the back's 4700 RPM, uh, at 6 amp, 180 volt. So I'll probably run this one at um, about 8 amp, um, probably 180 volt too. Um, and uh, what we'll do, oh, and probably about 4,500 RPM, um, somewhere around that. So I'm, I have the pulley made now, um, but... Uh, I need to make a keyway uh, in the pulley, um, so that'll be another video. Um, but uh, today we'll go through turning, turning the pulley. Um, I've probably done a few things while turning it completely wrong, um, but I'm a hobby machinist, and in fact I'm. Um, even in saying that, I'm, I'm only really starting, so there's quite a few things that I may have done wrong, or there may be better ways of doing it, but um, this is how I've done it. So, um, yeah. So this is this is the speed control that I'm going to be using. Um, it's got a, it's it's not a bad little speed control. It's supposedly rated at 10 amps. Um, got acceleration, deacceleration, max speed, minimum speed. Uh, torque, which is basically the maximum output current, and uh, compensation, which is RPM. It feeds in more current as the motor slows down and tries to keep it at a constant RPM. There's no RPM sensor on this one, unfortunately, which would be good if it could actually sense its RPM and dial up the current as needed, but um, they're, they're not easy to, to find that type, so... Um, what we'll do is um, run with this one for the time being and see how she performs. 
I will have a um, a uh, taco on the lathe, um, so I'll know if it's slowing down or anything while cutting. So let's let's get to um, turning this poly. So we're using a um, steady rest here. I'm just setting it up near the chuck and uh, moving it down. That's close enough. It's only going to be to turn the end and put a center in. You want to make sure these are well oiled so they don't have rollers. I really need to make a bigger hand wheel on the cross slide. As you can see, it's it's a little bit stiff, and uh, it's very hard to get a nice smooth turn on. So I'll just uh, bang a center through. And now we can get rid of the um, the steady. As we'll have a live center in it, so and we'll just turn the outside down. Okay, so that's my that's my uh, profile for the pulleys that are in there. We're uh, 10 millimeters deep, 9.6 millimeters across the top, and 3.8 millimeters across the bottom. Um, so I'll have to calculate that angle that's on there, and uh, we'll go from there. According to my calculations, the the angle coming in uh, is 16 degrees. So I'll set the cross slide to that. So here I'm just going to make a bit of a plunge cut. I actually got my calculation wrong. Well, I thought about it wrong, and uh, I actually did the. Uh, I thought about the diameter, so I only went in as half as deep as I needed. And you can see I've got a uh, chamfer tool there. I've taken a bit more out. Call that close enough. So I'm having major problems with the belt slipping. The tooth belt on this is half the reason why I want to uh, make this pulley because it just slips. It's horrible. And in fact it's got no teeth left on it really. So you can see that I had to plunge in and take some more out the middle. Yeah. And just keep measuring it. Making sure that y your uh, top and bottom dim dimensions are heading towards you want them.
And then once they start getting close, I'll start testing the belt. See the belt's not quitting, quite sitting uh, full depth, so I need to take a little bit more out. I'll make it a little bit wider. So you can see there I was at 9.3, and we're actually looking for 9.6. So it's always good to check while you're coming up close to your numbers. That's better. She's seated right in there now. Yep. Okay. Now I probably could have just drilled and bored my hole out in the center and then parted this off, flipped it around and then turned all this down. But uh, I want it to be running fairly true. Um, but in the end I, I didn't go quite far enough so... And also I didn't really fancy parting to that depth. So I just thought this might be a bit easier. I'm just plunging a little bit with a diamond shaped uh, carbide tool. It seems to go okay. Until I get to a little bit of depth and then I have to uh, get a left hand or right hand um, facing tool and, and get rid of the, the angles either side. As you can see though, the lathe does do not a bad uh, depth of cut, but um, as soon as you use the slower belt, it, the tooth belt, it just skips and it's horrible. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's worn all my teeth off the belt. I don't know why they decided to use a tooth belt, let alone a real cheap one. So here we're just drilling the middle out to get the boring bar in. I probably could have just whacked a 12mm drill or something straight up the guts, but I thought I'd uh, go with an, I think it was an 8mm first. And then move up to the big 12 Then we go with the boring bar and I've got the 
um, steady rest back on. Just because it would have been a bit of deflection and make sure you uh, check your dimensions regularly. Oh, you can see I've got this in absolute mode, so I can see I've got uh, point. Uh, one six of a millimetre left to go there. And, uh, I'm trying to part it off now and you can hear the motor or the belt just skipping. So I didn't uh, be able to, I, I couldn't push as hard as I'd like and it was chattering, it was just horrible. So let me just face that off. So this is when I could have turned down that back section. And just add a chamfer. And don't forget to chamfer the outside. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, that's the pulley almost done. We have to broach the keyway still. I'm going to um, do that in the lathe. I'm going to make up a high speed steel tool um, and use the lathe kind of like a, a hand driven shaper. Um, so hopefully that all goes to plan because uh, I haven't I've never done it before and uh, yeah so let's let's hope that works that'll be in another video uh, please like comment and subscribe um, thanks for watching I'm the home stiller